Hello. Uh, today we've come to talk to you about street drugs, alcohol abuse, and anything else that brings a person's mind down and in a, in a way oh man. their hands are tied behind their back because their mind is being altered and therefore they're making the wrong decisions in life. So we believe that the drug scene in this country is very bad and there's many people who are in professional work, perhaps doctors, nurses, um, social workers and people out there in the media. Yeah. People out there in the media every day are taking drugs to help them cope with the workload. And perhaps it's just something they picked up in their college days or teenagers at school and they've not let go of the habit. And I believe there's going to come a time when all people going for these kind of jobs will be investigated by the employees. Because... Um, by the employers. Sorry. <laughs> the employers. And that they'll be marched off if, if they're taking any substance. Because there's a lot of mistakes being made in hospitals, schools, and the local media and the social welfare system. And out there, there are people on a daily basis not making the right decisions because drugs have a hold on their mind. We're not just mentioning the, the, the youth of today and the young people who live in hostels and various different accommodation in the city, but we're talking about professional people as well who are hooped on um, maybe it's cocaine. weed, yeah, cocaine, weed, heroin, whatever it is. Stop it, if you're one of those people, yes, you need to seek help before mm. it destroys your whole life, takes away your career, takes away perhaps your house, your family. So I would say to anyone today, if you do the responsible job in the community, and even if you're not, Taking drugs is not an alternative. It's not an alternative way of life. It has consequences. And sooner or later, there will be a day of reckoning in which there'll be no going back. So it's something to think about because mo a lot of our young people in this country and obviously all over Europe are being totally disarmed and yielded mentally ill in the end. A lot of them end up in mental hospitals due to the damage done to their brain. And if people think drugs doesn't damage you, it does. We've seen it first hand. Many of our friends are in mental, homes, mental yeah. homes, unable to cope with life and, and all down to drugs. So including drink. Including alcohol, yes. And the, the the drugs that come into this country, maybe they're coming from places like Colombia, Afghanistan perhaps parts of America? No, not America. So Central America and Afghanistan, yeah. Yeah, they're coming from parts of the world where, you know, there's a way of getting them in. They, they find a way to get them in. And in a way, it's chemical warfare on the streets of England and Europe and all over the world because these people are being chemically yielded dead. Because eventually they go downhill, and I've seen hundreds die in my time working with the, within the Salvation Army and other different homeless groups. I've seen hundreds wiped off the map. Not a word, absolutely wiped off the map. Not a word in the papers. The odd crying parent has come to find out what their last, you know, their son's last whereabouts what they were doing and that's about it so drugs is a massive hindrance and somebody out there makes money they do break up drug rings and they've done recently in Bristol and, and probably all over this country but that's just the tip of the iceberg 
and the damage that's been done to our school children, because I have known people to go in to schools, to break new ground and bring in weed and get kids hooked on it. So there needs to be a we vigilance we saw in schools. A, we saw a ten year old boy in the skate park yeah. who told us his his, his elder brother was was giving him drugs to sell, wasn't it? Yeah, and that was in Bristol in, in a skate park where you think your ten, your eight year old child is happy playing on the skateboard, there's other things going on. He showed us a spliff, he had one of these yeah. must have been about 16, 15, 14, big spliff. Mm. And he pointed to a younger friend who looked at me about eight or nine and he said he's got them in his pocket. And the young boy said, yeah, I'm selling them for my brother. So you see, Stop it, no. this is what we've come to, yeah? We've come to the kindergarten almost. And this is where the drugs are coming in now. It's not at the higher school level, you would expect, but it's in the playgrounds such as um, skating parks and that. So we would say to people, be more vigilant with your children. They may be just innocently going off to the skateboard, to the park, and everything seems okay. But it's good to keep a good eye on what your children are doing on school holidays and other times and be very vigilant because it's at this young age group now that they're getting them hooked. So we, we would mm -hmm. say to people out there mm -hmm. in professions, yeah, if don't close a blind eye to your colleagues injecting people in the hospitals, taking blood and giving injections who is taking weed or other substance themselves. Be a whistleblower because you could save their life as well as the patients that are coming under them. And we know this is going on in hospitals and we know it's going on in nursing homes. It's going By on. By the staff, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, staff yeah. are taking drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know the staff are on drugs. We've heard of it. Uh, we don't know the first time who they are, but they're out there and it's time to bring them in. It's time to check them out. Time to see that the people that are working in our welfare system, in our hospitals, in our nursing homes, in our schools and various other places, that these people are legitimate, these are caring people and not people there to feed their own habits and, and not care for the, the people who are coming in under their care. Mm. So drugs is a bigger problem than what most people think. And it will only affect you when it comes into your house, comes into your home, and you have to deal with it. And maybe you're a parent and you're drinking, you're on alcohol yourself, and you're not watching your teenage children, but you're selfishly drinking and putting your head under the mat, as it were. And how can you help your child if you've got a problem yourself? So I'd say to a parent like that, Seek help for yourself first and then get help for your children because you're a very bad ro role model if you're, you know, engaged in substance while your children are young and... Dangerous. Dangerous, yeah. So it's time to waken up to this problem in our midst and to start dealing with it and to come off substance yourselves if you're an adult and you've got people under your care because there, there's no happy ending to drug or alcohol. There is no happy ending. I lived with the consequences through my childhood of an alcoholic and I saw that he would take the money for the baby's food. There was no load he would not take to get his alcohol. The same with drugs. I've known and I've heard of people that have beaten their grandmother up and stole her money to buy drugs beating their mothers, beating their family up to get their hands on money for drugs. And going to prison. <laughs> and they've gone to prison, yeah. There's mm. many in prison right now and they're... Suffering the consequences. Yeah, but they can't wait to get out to get back on the streets again and be just as bad as ever. Stop so I you. speak to you people, yes, out mm -hmm. there. <laughs> stop. Stop, stop it. Them. Yeah, stop mm. it. Because there's nothing like a life free from substance. There's nothing like a life free from the bondage that 
drugs and alcohol brings you into. Because it doesn't stop at just drinking or taking drugs. It's getting the money to keep that habit up. And if it stops you working, then you've a bigger problem because you can't look after yourself. You can't pay your bills. You can't pay your rent. So it's an ongoing problem. And I know most of what I'm saying, many of you will say, I know all that. But knowing is not enough. Mm -hmm. You it. have to put it into operation. You have to seek help for alcohol and drugs. There is the AA out there, and there is uh, drug programs, and you need to seek them. Because I know of many youth at the moment who have problems, and they're not drug problems, but they're personality problems within schools and colleges because they have an alcohol parent at home and they haven't got the support they need. They haven't got anyone out there for them at this very crucial time in their lives because that parent is more interested in their alcohol or their weed than in looking after their children they're brought into the world. So it's time to waken up and clean up. Go on, you can right. Yeah, um, a few things. God, I live in a inner city area. It's called Stokes Croft. You might have heard it by the riots, and it's where all the homeless hang out and drunks yeah. on the street. And God told me, Jesus told me, yeah. going back 12 years now, that He was crying for these addicts. I mean, most people when they commit a sin, they're not actually addicted to, um, you know, to to being greedy or something. Maybe they are. But these are actually physical, chemical, biological addictions, as you know, everyone knows this. Mm -hmm. And as Bridget was saying, they're dying. They're dying out there, and Jesus' heart is he's crying for them. Mm -hmm. He wants them saved. And yes. please God. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. Bridget's a prophetess, and we were praying about them one day. And uh, God said to you, give up all substances ourselves, like, like coffee, tea or coffee. Tea. And then we'll be free. And chocolate. As Bridget was saying, yeah, mm -hmm. chocolate to pray for these addicts. Yeah, because we wouldn't be addicted to anything ourselves, and we would have known the withdrawal symptoms. Even from coffee, you can get withdrawal symptoms, and from tea. I mean, we drink tea now, but the occasion you have about a, what, a cup a day, a cup a, a cup a week. Yeah, I've cut out the tea I used to drink and the chocolate, and, and totally cut it completely, and I feel that I have gained back my own so. self. And, and now we're free to pray for addicts. Yeah. I, I had paranoia um, having taken a lot of cannabis abroad and uh, I thought I can't live like this. So I gave on the 5th of January it was, one, one day, mm. I, I gave up tea, coffee, alcohol, cigarettes and dope. Not that I was smoking dope but I decided I wasn't going to take any more ever. And uh, the next day I woke up paranoia free. Mm. It was wonderful. Mm. And uh, yeah, I've broken. The last addiction I had when Bridget got that word was I realised I was, I was slightly addicted to tea. Mm. I wanted that afternoon tea. Mm. Broke that easily within a month. And then chocolate. I know it sounds very petty and very small, but uh, God wants you free. As yeah. Bridget was saying, not yeah. under bondage. No, not and addicted. It, uh, uh, yeah, and it sets us free to pray for addicts. And we've, we've mm. prayed for people at church, haven't we? Homeless people. We have done, And yeah. we've had miracle deliverances. Remember yeah. that, Adrian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he got free. And, um... We want to pray for you now, if, if you have any of these addictions. We'd like mm. to pray for you that God will bring you to a place where you're willing to get help. Mm. And you're willing to come out of these addictions uh, for the sake of your health, your future and those around you because it's not right that your habits should affect your health your wealth, your family it, it, it affects everything in the end and so maybe you might say oh well I'm enjoying this weed, this joint's good and I'm fine and I, I've been doing it for a few years and all that but eventually there will come a day of reckoning and a day in which you won't be able to cope anymore and a day in which it will be much more difficult to go back and pick up the pieces. They said, yeah, mm -hmm. they, they, what were they going to say? Oh yeah, there was a study. You yeah. got more to say? Right. Yeah, go on. The, uh, and they said in this study 
that 100% of those people who were mentally ill in hospitals had taken marijuana. And we know people who have taken magic mushrooms, mentally yeah. ill. Mm -hmm. And did you know that the word in the Greek in the Bible, pharmakos, is the same word for drugs as it is for witchcraft? Because yeah. it's a mind-altering drug. Yeah, it's all And God does not want you to alter your mind. Yeah. Now, people will say, we said this in other videos, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. we've been asked many times, well, why did God create the marijuana plant, the cocaine plant, the poppy? And I'll say it again. Yeah. In very, very small, controlled circumstances, uh, amounts, it is good for you. Like, it can take the pain from multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. it morphine can deaden serious pain. But in, in any more than that, it is dangerous and yeah. harmful. Just like God created poisons, which are useful for us to kill pests, for example, but not to be taken in. Okay, so that's the reason God created these plants. Mm -hmm. Under very small controlled circumstances, for example, the authorities will allow us to, to give out a multiple sclerosis through the doctor. Yeah. Um, the Bible says, um, submit to the authorities and they're right and I'm fully persuaded that the authorities are right on drugs and uh, there's yeah. danger going on uh, from the politicians who want to legalize it cannabis and we say don't because it, it really messes you up yeah. and, and I yeah. say to these politicians that I've taken a lot of cannabis and I tell you it's terrible yeah. it makes you paranoid it mm. um, it uh, what else does it do it it takes your money away it, 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 um, yeah, I, I, it, and it well, destroys the brain eventually. Yeah, I actually went green sometimes. People yeah. told me I went green and then vomited and everything. It's, it's a disgraceful way for a human being to end up. Yeah. Isn't it? Five minutes. Yeah, it, we'll pray for it. And um, yeah. it, 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 the, the result is that people are in mental homes, they drop out of society, they become alternative in their thinking, they, they reject normal values and they don't end up being good contributors to society yeah. at all. And also... So the politicians don't legalise it. Young mothers... You don't know what you're talking about. That's right. Young mothers who are taking drugs while they're pregnant. That's the terrible okay. thing. Because not only are you destroying your life, but you're also destroying your baby's brain before they're even born. You're not giving them a chance. You're and and stay off cigarettes while you're yeah. pregnant as well. You're not giving them that chance. So, you know, you need to think for what you're doing. And we would like to pray for you because we're, we are Christians and we don't believe in horse whipping you or, you know, we're just saying here for your own good, if you listen, you will be set free. And we want to pray for you now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, we bring this drug problem, this alcohol problem to you. And we know there are people out there desperate to come off it. People who haven't even come to that decision yet. And Lord, we ask that you would bring them to the end of themselves, Lord, so they would see the damage they're doing. Lord, we pray that in heaven the ministry and angels, Lord, that are available will go out onto the streets, Lord. We ask the angels to go out there and to guide and protect these young people, these young vulnerable people in the skateboard place, the ones we met, and all the other youth that are out there that are just beginning their lives. Lord God, we cry out today. We shake the gates of heaven to those young people, mm -hmm. Lord. We beg for those young people, Father God, that you will Amen. God deliver is them. Here. God is yeah. here. Send, send down your power from heaven, Lord Jesus, and deliver those young people. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for every addict out there, whatever they're addicted to. Father God, that you would send down your love and your power from heaven, Lord, and even deliver them as they're walking on the streets to, to, to buy their poison we call it, to buy their weed. Lord, we pray that there will be deliverances out there on the streets of Bristol and all over this country, Lord. We just pray for supernatural deliverance from young people from these terrible drugs, Lord. 
for we ask for a supernatural outpouring of your spirit Amen. upon those people, Father God. We pray that in Jesus' Jesus. name, in Jesus' name, we pray that you will deliver these people from these substances. For the people working in, you know, nurses, doctors working in nursing homes, working in hospitals, the social welfare people, the people looking after young vulnerable children in our society, Father God, foster carers, Lord. We pray that you will pour out your spirit, Father God, and that people will be delivered. They won't want to go down this road anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask Amen. that you be delivered from these terrible drugs. In fact, we pray that Jesus Amen. does a powerful work in stopping them coming into the country. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And another word for the for the politicians is um, class class. C drugs, marijuana, lead usually to to greater to worse drug abuse, more yeah. serious drugs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I dabbled with speed and, and things like that and ecstasy mm -hmm. when I was abroad. And um, so, you know, don't don't um, open the door a crack because mm -hmm. um, it's not helpful for people. Also, get in touch with us if you wish, and we'll we'll help you. Any time that you feel there's no one you can contact, we'll put you in contact with the right people. And there's an, in, at least in the UK, I believe there's a there's a phone number called Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. So uh, phone them. Yeah, there's lots of different. Um, you know, there's what can you think of? Any? The Salvation Army and any it? church. Just go to your local church, yeah. talk to the leader, and um, he'll pray for you and help you. Yeah, there's lots of people out there that will be there for you. Just say no. Say no. Say no. And mean it. Yeah. And stay with us. Don't change your mind once you've come away. Say no. Get get away it. from druggy druggy influences, friends, so called friends. Yeah. Say no to drugs and live. Yeah. Because it's witchcraft. Yeah. It alters the mind. And God loves you with an everlasting love. Kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Amen. God loves you. Thank you, Lord. Remember Hallelujah. Remember